Great. Yes. Yeah, totally. Recording. So first of all, this meeting will be recorded and uh, replay will be available uh, on this same web webpage within 48 hours. Um, so first let's introduce ourselves. My name is Jessica. I'm one of the um, public diplomacy officers here at the public diplomacy section at US Embassy Jerusalem. And I'm joined by my colleagues, Veronique and Manal. And we're happy to go over some key reminders about this funding opportunity, and then we'll have time for question and answers. Uh, so please, if you have questions as we go on, we'll answer them at the end so um, put your questions in the chat, or once we reach um, the end of our summary, you can raise your hands in the Zoom link, but we'll ask you to hold your questions till, till we get to a stopping point in the presentation. Okay, so first I wanna start by reviewing a couple key things on the website. We'll uh, share screen in just a minute. You want this one? Yeah. Do you have to share it? Yeah. Go to uh, Teams. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Manal, if you want to share the link in the chat. Sure. So just a reminder that all the key information is found in this Notice of Grant Opportunity, our annual program statement on our website. So you can search on U.S. Embassy Israel grants and navigate there, or Manal is going to share the link in the chat. Is it not showing the website? You are. They're showing. You yeah. shared. You're okay. Fine. Yeah. Right. So, just a reminder: the deadline for applications is June thirtieth. There are will be no exceptions or extensions on that, and the grants um, applications need to be submitted to the email address. Um, our total amount available is approximately five hundred thousand dollars. This may vary uh, depending on availability of funds, and we're seeking uh, applications ranging from $20,000 to $150,000. <clears> One thing we're emphasizing is we really are looking for projects that are scalable. So you may, um, for example, if you wanted to hold a series of workshops, um, if it's designed so that you can adjust the number of workshops based on the amount of funding, that's really useful for us. Uh, the purpose of this grant program is to strengthen ties between the United States and Israel. All programs should include a U.S. cultural element or connection with U.S. experts, organizations, or institutions. So we're pretty flexible on what this means. Uh, this could be including an American speaker in one of your programs. It could be using a curriculum that includes some coverage of U.S. history. Um, it could be incorporating American values like diversity, democracy, and gender equality. If you have specific questions about whether your proposal meets that, feel free to write to our email address. Uh, we have three primary objectives that we're trying to advance, so proposals should advance at least one of these. Um, promoting conditions conducive to Israeli-Palestinian peace enhancing economic opportunities for citizens and residents of Israel, or bolstering security and stability in Israel and the United States. So here's some examples of what that can look like. Um, it could be training, seminars and speaker programs, discussions between diverse populations and workshops and training. Um, and here, this is important. These are our priority um, program areas. So proposals should fall under one of these seven. So the first one is, it could be more than one of the seven, but at least one of them. So um, <clears throat> strengthening voices to generate conditions favorable to peace building, capacity building among civil society peace builders. Um, we have 
women's leadership. Number four is promoting understanding of US policies. Number five is um, promoting the principles of DEIA. Number five is expanding economic opportunities and advancement for historically marginalized or disadvantaged populations. There's a lot of topics that fall under this one, including entrepreneurship, technology, um, English language, the environment. And number five is enhancing media literacy to counter the effects of disinformation by foreign actors. Here's some examples of target audiences, um, not limited to this list, but it could be something like youth ages 15 to 25. It could be social media influencers and journalists, subject matter experts, young professionals, et cetera. Um, as a reminder, there's some types of projects that are not eligible for funding. So please take a look at this. Some highlights are any kind of partisan political activity we cannot fund, but we could fund um, capacity building for already elected leaders, you know, across all political parties, for example, that would be okay. We could, we could fund a project that brings religious leaders together for dialogue, but we can't support specific religious activities. No construction programs, um, no scientific research under this funding opportunity. So those are some reminders there. These projects are meant to start no later than September 30th, but they can continue on into the fall and into next year. <clears throat> uh, we often see projects that may take place up to a year, a year and a half, that would be fine. And if you have questions about specific lengths of time, write to our email address. Um, cost sharing is not required. And <clears throat> Applicants should be a registered not-for-profit. It should not be a governmental institution. Um, they can be think tanks, they can be individuals, but not. they should not be for-profit or commercial entities. Um, only one proposal per organization. This is very important. If, if two proposals are submitted, both will be- um, Declined. Both will Rejected. be ineligible, yeah. However, an organization can be a subcontractor um, on a proposal submitted by another organization as the prime. Again, if you have questions, write to our email address, which is, uh, Manal, can you put that in the chat sure. too? Tel Aviv Grants, that's state.gov. Yeah. Okay, and so then we won't get into all of this right now, but we'll go through the content. So there's important instructions here about the budget. It should be in English, budgets in US dollars certain formatting requirements. And then these are the forms that you must submit. So for individuals, it's a shorter list, this SF424I and the PD small grants form. And then for organizations, there's an additional budget workshop, I'm sorry, worksheet. Um, and then we've got other requirements depending on the proposal, budget justification, CV for key personnel, um, and this is more, more details about the, what is contained in the application. And finally, you must um, register for this UEI number through SAM.gov. And the registration with SAM.gov can be a little tricky and take some time. So we encourage you to register immediately, even while you're still working on the proposal. Go ahead and register with SAM.gov. If you have trouble with your registration, um, you're not alone. It's it's a difficult system. And there's a there's a link on that SAM.gov page to open a trouble ticket. So you should immediately open a trouble ticket if you're having trouble with registration. We're very limited in our ability to help guide you through that process, unfortunately. Sometimes it's a, a matter of spelling or a detail in how the organization's address is listed. So it, it really depends on the particulars there. So we can't do much to help you, but the team at SAM.gov can. Um, and if the registration is still pending, let us know. We will not disqualify you for that pending, but you should apply before your application is submitted. Um, They're asking if we need to have a UAE um, and a SAM number or just a UAE. At the end, yeah. okay. okay. 
And then our, our email address is at the end. Email address. Is it's at the top. I ah, here it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the email address. This is for submissions and for questions. We'll be answering questions every few days on this. And we're also posting uh, frequently asked questions on this site. Um, so there's a link to our frequently asked questions and we'll be updating that as well. Here's our frequently asked questions. So if you click on that, um, you might find some more answers to your questions here. All right, so um, I just wanted to show as well, when you click on the forms, it's set to download the file, so it won't open a new page and it's gonna require that you have um, Adobe Reader installed. And so you should check your downloads when you click on the form. So it's it's not, see, here's the download. That's how you open the forms. It will not open a new website, so, or a new web page. So a couple of people have asked about that, but all these links should be active. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute and we're gonna take a look at the chat. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so let's start with, do we need a UEI and a SAM number or just UEI? Can you answer that, Vera? Okay. Uh, um, first, you need to register with SAM. At the beginning, you have a UEI, but then you need to follow on with the full registration. And what's the difference between a UEI and a SAM? SAM gives you a UEI number at the beginning, but it's not because you have a UEI number that you, that you are fully registered. So you just need to follow the steps in SAM.gov. Okay, thank you. And and we can still apply even if we're in process, you said, right? Yes, you may. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna come back to the SF424 form. Uh, we can go through that at the end of this session, but let's go through the other questions first. Okay, programs that duplicate existing programs are not eligible for funding. Does that include programs that are spin-offs of an existing program but target other types of beneficiaries and are tailored as such? Would you like to answer that, Vero? Let me know. If if this is part of the goals and objective that we are describing in the APS, then we should consider it. Uh, fully. And you can include in your narrative how this differs, you know, um, how it's built on the mm -hmm. first project that you started. So it could be like a continuation or, you know, you've seen how it worked, what could be done to make it better. So it can be like, you know, a second phase of a project, but not just like an existing project that's running and you just want to uh, add money, add funds to it. That's that's what we mean. Mm -hmm. Can a municipality be the one submitting a proposal? It's government. I believe the answer to this is no, that is a government. Um, but they can be like a partner in the project. They could even have some funding to the project, but they are not the main applicant to this project. And if you have specifics about a proposal, please feel free to write to Tel Aviv Grants. Can you please write out the address that you just said now for problems? It's up at maybe Manali. Can I you pin it. it? Yeah. Can you pin that one? Are travel costs, flight, hotels, et cetera, for Israeli participants to the U.S. acceptable? Uh, yes, certainly. If if this is part of the program that you are proposing. Okay. Okay, another question about duplicating existing programs. I hope we answered that question, Aviva. Um, we have at times funded programs that have been designed in the past. Maybe there's a new audience or a new, new dates, but there should be an explanation in the narrative. And as we said before, we shouldn't just be adding money to an ongoing initiative. This should be something that stands alone. Can I just ask about that? Does that mean that expansion of an existing program or adding new elements, like adding an American element to an existing program is considered a duplication or is that considered a new program? Uh, what you're describing sounds like a new program, but if you have questions to be sure you can write to our email address. Okay, 
Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Does an individual need a UEI or SAM registration? No, an individual does not need a UEI or SAM registration. Okay. And the maximum time range of a grant. Excuse oh, me. Sorry. I would like to, to add something. Oh, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. But an individual cannot have a for profit company. Okay. What is the maximum time range of the grant? Can it be two years? September 2024 to June 2026. Yes, it can be up to two years. Okay. Do the programs have to be based only in Israel or can there be a US Israel US program that is mostly based in the US? Uh, the beneficiaries are, are meant to be um, Israeli citizens and residents. So that's the key factor here. So it should not be targeted at US citizens. It cannot be targeted as US citizens as the primary beneficiary. Okay. I submitted a request for UEI, but they're requesting an official document in English, which I do not have. What should I do? <clears throat> uh, Dor, if you have more specifics about what document they're requesting, that might be helpful. Do you know? And okay. and you should you should contact, try to call the 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 some uh, some help directly. Call them directly because some organization had the request, and others organizations do not have this request. So maybe because of your organization is specific. So just call them, that's the best thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, Emily asks, do we send the different documents in one PDF attachment or can we send the four page proposal, budget, bios, and so in separate separate. attachments? Separate. <laughs> separate. In fact, do we prefer separate attachments? We do prefer yeah. separate attachments. Please. Yes, okay. it should be. <laughs> Are external evaluations needed for projects over twenty thousand dollars? No, no. Uh, it's it's bit uh, from from eighty thousand dollars. We will request an an external evaluation. And uh, maybe we can go over the rough timeline of this too while we're talking about this. So we'll receive your proposals by June 30th, no later. And then we'll go into a several week review process and we'll look at um, the proposals compared to our priorities. And we'll also look at the amount of funding and we'll come up with our initial list of projects we plan to fund. And then there's a negotiation phase where we'll get in touch with the selected um, organizations, and um, we can go back and forth on some details of the project definition and the budget, and that's where we might um, if, uh, review the need for an external evaluation. Do you want to add anything else no, about that? That's fine. Okay. Okay, Deborah asks, is a teacher education college funded by the PBC considered a government organization? What's PBC? Where yeah, is sir? it? A teacher education college funded by the PBC. What does the PBC stand for? Devora, would you like to clarify the question? Yeah, the question is where um, Wingate, um, Levinsky Wingate Academic College, and I want to know, we get funded now from VATAT. It's the VATAT um, 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 And so I'm wondering if we qualify. There is no... Uh, there is no, there is no, uh, you know, uh, a, a limitation to that. I mean, you can get funding from other organizations, even the VATAT, but, uh, you know, have to be clear when you're submitting a project, if they're cost sharing, what exactly the cost share that they're actually adding to your budget, but uh, they could be under the cost share if it's uh, relevant to the same project. But if it's in general getting from that for your college, it doesn't uh, really uh, affect your application. Yeah, and a college is not considered a government organization. Yeah, so you're, so you're yeah. eligible to apply. We have funded projects um, to Universities colleges and colleges, yeah. yeah. Universities and colleges, correct. If the latest start... Oh, okay. Did that answer your question, Devor? Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, if the latest start is September 30th, what is the earliest start possible? Is it 
possible to accommodate the start of the school year? I'm not sure what the estimated date of the start of the school year. Usually they start September 1st. Uh, basically starting a project is when you sign it. So, I mean, uh, you should plan not to start before end of September because we're not sure when you're going to finalize. If you get selected, uh, when, when the project or the award will be finalized. So plan to start after, you know, September 30th. But if it happens that you get selected and you get negotiated, and signed. It depends when you signed your award, but uh, in general, you should plan for uh, starting after sep September thirtieth. After or before Be September? Because 30th. I mean, yeah, 30th, September thirtieth and on. You know, before September thirtieth. Yeah. The the reason is that we do not cover the pre-award costs. Yeah. Anything. Any work done before the grant is signed, we cannot cover. That's right. Mm -hmm. Your grant will be signed before September thirtieth. That's like your uh, your official signing document. If the program, and there's also a period of delay before receiving the funds, is that worth noting that the, our first payment may be uh, later in the fall? To the fiscal year. To, to our fiscal year calendar. Yes, a few, few weeks. A few weeks, yeah. Okay, if the program is leaning on an American academic institute method without direct connection to that institute, is that good enough for the American context criteria? Um, it sounds like that it that sounds like it checks the box for American context. Make sure to include that in the narrative, Esri. What is meant by letters from partners? We don't have partners, we run the program ourselves. I think those are optional, right? Option yeah. documents yeah. in the application. So if you have a partner, it can be useful to include a letter from them, but that's not a requirement. I yeah, make sure that you, yeah, you mentioned that your partner is with them. <laughs> We are a musical duo. One of us is a U.S. citizen as well as Israeli citizen. Does this affect our application? That's a good question. Are, are you a registered company? <laughs> that may be more relevant. Country Star, maybe you can write to us with the specifics yeah. to the email because it sounds like there's some, some specifics that might matter in your case. Because if you are a registered for profit company, you cannot apply for a grant. Okay. Um, Michal Sela Forum, can the project start before September 30th? Sure, as, as, soon, as soon as the grant is signed. And grants will probably before. be signed in August and September, right? Not before August, probably, yeah, but yeah. That's um, why our deadline to too. sign is the end of September. So August and September is when we'll be signing. Does applying for a grant contradict other programs of support from the Public Diplomacy Department? Again, Country Star, maybe you can write to us with specifics. Is there any advantage for a request that combines more than one body or a priority for organizations that have already received grants in the past? Um, Alona, all applications are considered on their own merit, but we do take into account past performance. So if you have received a grant in the past, we'll look at the documentation we have about how that grant was carried out. And for more than one group, I would say not necessarily an advantage there, um, but explain in the narrative why it's a strength to combine more than one group. Sometimes we fund um, applications like this. I would say it's, it's a neutral. And we welcome new applicants. Doesn't have to be someone who already worked with the embassy, as long as they can prove their capacities and their, uh, you know, ability to implement the project. Okay. Can an academic institution apply? It's registered as a nonprofit. Yes, an academic institution can apply. Um. Okay. And another question about benefiting both U.S. and Israeli citizens. Depends on. Well, let's see can if I, we. Hi. Clarify. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. My name is Safwan. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Me too. Uh, if our project uh, combines uh, re re religion and art through mm -hmm. uh, through projects from all religion, Muslim, Druze, and the Jewish, through activities of art like painting and clay and different uh, different parts of uh, activity, activities, even dancing. And uh, so we can gather all people together to, so, to do this kind of activities 
through art. Is it good for you? Yes, that kind of activity can be funded. So we the, on the point about specific religious activities, we couldn't train like we couldn't fund like religious training for one religious community, for example. But certainly what you described that what you described is eligible. Yes. Because we uh, last uh, three weeks, we make activities through football and sport. Yes. Uh, from Chikfaria uh, village in the north and Kleel and Nahriya. Because yeah. we want to, uh, because of all the situation, we don't want to, because it's uh, bad what is going on without uh, telling the, the details. It's so sad what is happening. So we make a uh, football matches between Arab and Jews. So they, we can break the ice and they maybe we give a message to make a better generation. So we want to make a, pro, a long time project through one year or two years, and we will build it correctly that it combines your needs. Thank you very much. Thank you, yes, that would be eligible. Okay, Thank you. Um, great. Thank you, Safwan. Um, so there's a question or comment about translating and adding translator declaration. Is that necessary? Translating what? Okay. Can, can you can you clarify your question? Can can you explain yes. your question? Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm. I submitted a form that it in Hebrew to the to get my UEI. UE, number um and they requested of me uh to translate translate the document my question is should i just translate the document and uh, get a, a signature from a translator or should i get a notary okay. or, or an advocate signature that this is a a proper translation okay that was a request from sam right yes Okay, then please contact the SAM people and they will tell you okay. what they accept and what they cannot accept. Okay. Okay, so we're moving on to the next question about can some of the grant funds be used in the, I assume PA means Palestinian Authority. Then there's another question, are residents eligible, for example, Palestinians from East Jerusalem or only citizens of Israel? So we will, in some cases, consider cross-border grants, but we're not looking at grants that are primarily taking place in the Palestinian territories or East Jerusalem, because we have a partner at the Office of Palestinian Affairs that um, works in those regions primarily. So if it's a combination of beneficiaries, we can consider those. Um, please explain in your narrative. And if you have specific questions, in this case, I would say it's best to write to our email ahead of time so we can direct you whether it best fits with this funding opportunity or perhaps our colleagues from the Office of Palestinian Affairs when they publish their grants opportunities. And we're just sharing the link for their website so you can go there and see all their uh, notice of funding and anything specifically for the West Bank and Gaza. But we do, um, primary beneficiaries can be as uh, residents as well as citizens. So we don't have a criteria, but the organization should be um, based in Israel um, or, or the United States. Okay, uh, when would we receive funds if selected? I think we're looking at kind of the later part of October for the first transfer. Is that yes. typically, yes. it depends year to year. It's based on our own you know, when we receive our budget from Washington, but um, that's the rough ballpark. Yeah, because the first two weeks of October, the financial system is off because, because we are starting the new financial year. Mm -hmm. So that should take, hopefully, it's, if it's signed by 30th of September, that should mm -hmm. take between two and three weeks. Okay, what should be the payload estimation for reporting? I'm not sure if I understand the question, but maybe it has to do with the budget. Um, Esri Kedar from Keshet, would you like to clarify your question? Or maybe a follow up in the chat, or if you want to come off of mute. Okay, we're going to leave that for a minute. Okay. okay, should the application be filled out on the application form as opposed to maybe by hand? I think you can type it in the PDF. 
right? Or yes, or, or if it's not suitable, uh, you can write it, but it's better to type it in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I submitted a request for UEI, but they're requesting an official. We've I think we've answered this mm -hmm. one, and so we're going to go to sam.gov. Um, you might want to if there's a a call, I mean a phone line to call, you might try that. And again, you can write to us if you want, but we're probably going to point you back to one of the resources from sam.gov on this question. So it looks like you've started some com uh, communication with them. So if you get stuck, we can try to help you troubleshoot how to move forward, but it'll be with them. Some examples for capacity building projects that may be funded under this grant. Would you like to give an example, Manal? Sure. I mean, uh, uh, first of all, the, any project should address the priorities that we mentioned there. In terms of capacity building, it could be, for example, for uh, NGOs that work in, in a certain uh, you know, a field that actually addresses the priorities that we are sharing in the EPS. So you would actually plan a capacity building training for these uh, participants in the NGO, for example, itself, or capacity building for uh, coordinators or uh, you know stakeholders that they are working with. So you can also plan a training for, for those folks. So it can be within the NGO itself, for example, or for the partners that you are trying to achieve the objectives that match our priorities in this APS. Okay, Wendy asks, we have one consistent Israeli partner, a music school, but often work with others as well, also in connection with the grant we'll be applying for. Should we get partnership letters from all of them? I think that you the the less is best <laughs> <laughs> because if you have too too many documents to review, it's time consuming. So if you have a strong letter from your main partner, then please attach it. And if we need more information, we'll we'll ask for it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if there's a partner that's critical to the success of the program, that can be useful to have because that's one thing we'll be reviewing is the, you know, we do a risk analysis and that, that would be one of the factors. Should the U.S. element represent a minimum of the total budget or it could be one activity among many activities and only re represents a small part of the budget? I don't think there's a budgetary requirement for this. It can be woven into to any of the parts. So, but I think just take a look at it overall. Is, is there a recognizable US element? Um, good question. Okay. <laughs> Michal, okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Safwan. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we have we uh, we live in a mixed uh, village, three religions, uh, Muslim, Christians, and Jews, and Druze. When we do uh, uh, one activities, we take in consider that we help another community, like uh, uh, Christian and Druze, especially uh, uh, in the case of uh, a school budget when. Uh, in the school, we don't have budget to do uh, to buy books and uh, and uh, ba backpack. And in Ramadan, uh, we we care we take care of the need need the, the of the feast in the end of the day. Uh, and we have some activities to help uh, people in the West Bank, in orphan in orphan uh, houses and the uh, older. Uh, mm -hmm. My question is, uh, how can you, from your own perspective, uh, tell us in, in the end or in uh, during the time to make things better? Maybe we, we don't do it uh, the way. Uh, maybe you have another opinion or another activity or another idea for us, if you can help us to mm -hmm. have another perspective to deal with the subject. This is my question. Maybe we don't, uh, we are limited in the way we do things. So uh, uh, my question is, can you give us ad with the time or during the mail advice? Maybe we can do things better to have more benefits. Thank you very much. Thank you, Safwan. Um, I think a question like yours is better to have a conversation separately. So let's, um, if you want to write to us in our email to start, 
we can follow up with you. And that brings Thank up you one very, Thank you very much. You're welcome. I want to emphasize one point too, is that these are, grants are not for charitable or development activities. So um, keep an eye on that as well. While we, we think that charitable activities are wonderful, that's not what this funding is for. Um, and Michal asked about, can the project start after September 30th? I think the answer is yes, right? The, the, the award start date cannot be later than September 30th. But of it course you need you need to 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 prepare your project so you have a time of preparation and you, your program of course will start after September 30th, but the preparation time can start. Great. So the official start date is when the grant is signed, which is going to be before September 30th, but the bulk of the activities can happen and we expect them to happen after September 30th. Hope that answers the question. Does applying for this grant impact future MEPA applications in any way? MEPA is one of the um, USAID funding opportunities. Um, I don't believe that it affects MEPA in any way. If it's not a du duplicate of the program yeah. and the funding. We may look at something like if a grantee is already a MEPA uh, recipient, that may make them less likely to be funded under this funding opportunity, but we'll consider everyone and please, that'll be part of it. Part of the application is whether you have received US government funding in the past. And in many cases, a, a grant through a program like this might prepare you for future larger grants like MEPA. So it won't disqualify you. Okay, is enhancing economic opportunities for citizens limited to economic enhancement or can it be certain employment sectors or is it flexible? Uh, Rowan, I think it's flexible. Um, so um, if you have questions, write to our email, but- um, It can be any field basically yeah. that will, uh, you know, advance uh, the economic situation of a specific group or, you know, uh, a sector that you're working with. Okay, does workshops that include Israeli and is US citizens, are they eligible? I believe the answer is yes, yes. right? Yeah. But you cannot fund the uh, US citizens, you know. It's, uh, you yeah, so the them. you know, the primary beneficiary should be Israeli. There can be a US and, and that would be an example of a US component if you have an element of um exchange between US and Israeli citizens. But the primary, you know, the organizations and the beneficiaries should be based more in Israel. Okay, is there an advantage to an ongoing project or workshop or major event? Like if it's a one-time event versus a longer, you know, spread out? Not necessarily. Uh, explain in the, in the narrative why this is a high impact. Um, okay, can we download the SF424 form from this location? Um, it's probably the same one. We have it online if you want. From grants.gov, yeah. Yeah, just check the version okay. when you when you download it. It should be the same. Do you need to okay? People are helping each other. Thanks. Okay. I appreciate that. Is a US Institute of Higher Education that is working in partnership with an Israeli college eligible for this funding that will benefit students from both institutions? Um if the U.S. is a non-profit organization, is working in partnership. If yeah, if it's an, a non-profit organization, we can consider it. Okay. Um, can sports organizations that are non-profit organizations but partly funded by the government apply for educational programs that are not funded? Um, I think the answer is yes, you can receive government funding, but you can't be a government organization. Is there an advantage to a project in Jerusalem or a national project? Okay, so like a localized versus a nationwide? No, um, I will say again that we really encourage uh, projects that are scalable. So if you had a version of your project that just takes place in one location and a version that could take place in multiple locations, um, we encourage you to put that in the application because we'll consider that as we make decisions on funding um, 
Sometimes additional funding becomes available later. And if there's a project that we could replicate or expand to include multiple locations, there might be additional funding. Um, but if you based it in one location initially, then um, that would be fine as well. So include that in your narrative. Obviously you'll have to pick one of the two for your, your budget, um, but do include uh, that element of scalability. What is the earliest start date um, of programs taken into account? Can newly launched programs starting in 2024 also be taken into account? No, we cannot retroactively fund um, activities that have already taken place. But if there is a, if you can show that the activity we're funding starts in the fall, it could be maybe part of a larger program, but it should be as something separate from something that's already started. Um, reporting work after being selected. I think this question was about budget. Can they include a budget line item for reporting work? What does it mean? Um, like writing report, a resource development. Oh, maybe yes, that's it's, what you mean. it's yes, sure. It's, it should monitoring be and evaluation in, in the budget, either as employee or either as contractor. The application font doesn't form doesn't meet the font size and margins required by the APS. Should we use the form or create our own format? I think the answer is you can use the form, but for the additional documents, you should. If you have like a Word document that goes along with it, then meet the font size and margins. So as much as you can work within those requirements, um, including on the standard form. That's more for, for the for, for the for the program itself. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Is train the trainer teachers and trainers a good fit for this grant? That's one of the elements that we listed as an example of um Examples of programs, programs designed to train the trainer. So yes, that is a good fit. The organization is Israeli. Can beneficiaries be from both East and West Jerusalem? Yes. What kind of expenditures do you recognize for funding? And are there certain direct expenditures for the program you do not recognize? Yes, there are. Uh, it's, it's listed. It's listed in the in the call for proposals. You want to give some examples? Uh, construction. You you cannot use funding for construction. Um, you can purchase here some. At the very end, there's guidelines for budget justification. So take a look at that at the end. Um, you can. But it's more for you know what is not authorized. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the list of. It's a list. Yeah, there's a list early on of what cannot be funded. The following types of programs are not eligible for funding. It's on page In the budget, three or four. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, no construction. Scientific mm -hmm. research, you can uh, we cannot not, be funded. Yeah. Fundraising campaigns. So mm -hmm. just go through the list. There's a few other things like um, if meals are an important part of the program, you can. Um, include some food costs, but you cannot include alcohol, for example. Mm -hmm. So read it carefully. Um, there's some specifics about equipment and supplies and how to account for that. Salaries can be included. Travel can be included. Everything should be justified in the narrative. How could the activities of a nonprofit organization not be charitable? Um, okay, so when we talk about charitable we're not looking at like donation of goods for example we're looking at um you know again the purpose of our of our programs is to strengthen ties between the u.s and israel through cultural and exchange programming um promoting conditions conducive to israeli palestinian peace enhancing economic opportunities um and bolstering security and stability so um so maybe that's a debate about the meaning of the word charitable, mm -hmm. but we're not looking at like donating goods or providing an ongoing service. Mm -hmm. And if I may add, the document that you that if you are accepted, you will sign is called award. An award is a contract. It's not a donation. And a contract, what does that mean? 
That means that you will be partner with the US Embassy to implement a specific program during a specific time for specific funding. Mm -hmm. Okay, the latest date that the project can start. So we said already that the the planning should start when it's when it's um, signed. But in terms of the bulk of the activities, is there an answer? To that? Uh, I mean, you can start the preparation as uh, as uh, from uh, as soon as the the signed. award is signed. Mm -hmm. Then you prepare the project, and then you start. I'd say in general, we're looking at the next year, but um, please, any specifics, if you think yours really is going to have a delay in starting, write to us ahead of time so we can give you some more specific advice on that. Okay, is there a report to be submitted to you in case the grant is approved? Yeah, yeah like a... Report. Yeah, do you want to talk about yeah, the quarterly sure. reports? Sure, once you actually uh, sign the award, uh, the award document will also include uh, clarification on uh, how many uh, reports you will be signing. Most projects, it's annual projects, so most likely it will be quarterly reporting, and we're talking about narrative reporting, and we're talking about financial reporting. So this can be discussed further uh, once you get selected and negotiating the grant and negotiating also the needs for each quarter, how much funding you need. So that's something that will be uh, negotiated with you. But uh, yes, definitely, we have a requirement for both quarterly report and financial report. We have certain uh, uh, forms that uh, you need to use, but uh, this can be discussed at that phase. And the list of specific reports and date, dates will be included in the award provisions. Mm -hmm. Okay, for an ongoing project that requires advertising of a show meant for audiences across Israel, do you have an advertising entity or should advertising services be included in the grant budget? So um, part of publicity marketing. can be part of the grant budget. Basically what we, you know, um, we can use our U.S. Embassy social media in some cases to promote things. And we encourage you to include a social media plan in your in your proposal as well. Um, but in terms of paid advertising, that's not generally something that we would um, offer separately from the grant. So you should include any publicity costs in your project costs. Yes. Also, if there's anything about selling tickets or um, just a reminder, it's not for profit. But I think if you have any questions about details of a project like this, please, um, please write to us because uh, we want to make sure that we steer you in the right direction. Do we have to submit the application form in addition to the four page proposal? Yes. And where can we get the recording of the webinar? It'll be on this website. Maybe do you want to post it's the, the same one again? If you're having this one. Yes. Yeah. It's on the same one um, on our webpage. What is the budget amount that can be requested for consideration? So the range that we indicated is $20,000 to $150,000. Um, okay, we've brought film and music students and professionals to Israel in the past, and we'll do so again, always with them participating in workshops, masterclasses, and such with Israeli peers. As soon as possible, we will be bringing some students and professors who are involved in an ongoing virtual program with Israeli students. Are travel expenses for these students and professors permitted? So that would be travel of um, students and professionals from abroad, I assume the United States to Israel, can those travel expenses be included? I mean, it's, it's, if it's from the United States, yes, but uh, what other countries do you have in mind? Yeah, you'd have to um, maybe be clear in your justification there. Uh, I believe our only- the US, thank you. Okay. So we cannot pay for the funding of US government employees, that's one. One thing to know, but it doesn't sound like you're necessarily including that. Presuming that the Palestinian NGO has no connection to the PA, can they receive funds to a Palestinian bank account with regards to the Taylor Force Act? Okay, that's a pretty specific question, and um, we're not looking, I believe, to directly fund Palestinian NGOs, but if they were a partner in some kind of cross-border initiative, there's a lot of um, details here. So please write to our email address and then we can help guide you if this is something that we would be able to fund versus 
our Office of Palestinian Affairs. Um, but in general, I think you're thinking about the right details. Okay, what's the latest date to apply for a grant? Uh, June 30th, all applications must be received by the end of the day on June 30th to our email. Expanding the activities of, okay, does expanding the activities of an existing program make it eligible for submission? If it covers a new area, we'll consider it. Can you please send the link for the full description of the grant? It and it's been shared link. again by mm -hmm. Ruth. Okay, what if the project does not take place on social media? That's okay. Um, social media is not a requirement. In some cases, there might be sensitivities or participants that don't want to be on social media. That's fine. Okay, this one and on the application form that you have to fulfill to fill out uh, a social media strategy or something like that. So uh, just wondering. Just to clarify why you were leader. So either way, um, you should think about what is the optimal use of social media. So um, if this is a program that would benefit, that we would be able to achieve our goals better by doing publicity on social media, then um, that should be included in there. What accounts, what type of material. If it's something where social media would take away from the benefits, you should write that too. So either way, just include some text that shows that you've thought about the social media component. Okay, thank you. Is there a priority for one year or two year projects and for higher or lower budget projects? No, there's not a um, not a defined priority. Um, you know, we have limited funding, so we'll be able to, we're looking to maximize how we meet our goals through the set of grants that we choose. There's no requirements. You know, we do do a risk analysis on all projects. So these are all maybe elements of that, but no specific requirements. Okay. Is the development of a web application for mental health by Israeli Arab Jewish American teams eligible? Um, it sounds like it's eligible, uh, you know, as long as it's not for profit. And please get us through the, okay, again, the SF424. Let's see if we have it open here. Yeah, it's open. Yeah, on the PDF one. But if they want to see how they download it, just go to the APS. Yeah, okay. I'm going to share the screen again. <clears throat> we'll look at the 424. And then one, one, one start more. Yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, so again, you click on this and it will download. So when you click, it might seem like nothing's happening. In this browser, it's opening this window. In my browser, on my, my computer, it didn't open a new window. And I had to just look over here at the downloads. And, the, and then it showed me the file here. Then we open it. No, okay. We, we saved one, so we can go back to the windows. Can I switch to no. share? Okay, let's go over here. This is it, I think. No, no, no. This one? Uh, yeah, no. Okay. okay, so here's the 424. Um, so I think in all cases, this would be an application, a new application, right? And and may I say that at the end of the, the, the form that you need to fill, you have the instructions, mm, the number point. by number. Let's go down to that first. Should have, uh, not here, but okay. yeah. Okay, so maybe we there's can, a version of add this. The instructions. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, make a, we'll make sure to add the instructions on the website. Good point. Sometimes we discover things in the course of things. Um, applicant identifier, so. That's you, the UEI. If you hover over it, it gives you an additional text. So applicant identifier number four is the UEI that you get from SAMDAC mm -hmm. Federal identity, entity identifier yeah. again. Okay, now that's here. Okay. And that may, maybe it's for mm -hmm. American citizens. I, I think we, the most important thing is just the, the basic uh, information the, about the yeah. application. Yeah. And if you see in uh, number six, this is where you can also put your uh, UAI okay. and uh, your actual organization name and your address. 
for this form, it's really uh, the basic information about your application, about your organization, details, contact, who is the official signatory, needs to be added there and needs to be signed as well. And you will have a section where it will ask you what is your project. So you can say it briefly, but then you say, you know, more, more, more explanation in the application form that you are submitting, the other application form, because that one, once you open it, you will see it has a structure of explaining what exactly we would like to hear about this project. But here you have to mainly uh, submit all the information about your organization, point of contacts, and who is the official signatory uh, for your application, because they are the one who needs to sign, and without their signature, uh, this would not be complete. Okay, good points. And this is a form, like many U.S. government forms, that is used for a broad range of funding opportunities, including domestic ones in the United States. So some of these fields are only applicable to domestic applicants and are not applicable here. So We'll try to update our FAQs to cover which are the um, essential forms or essential fields for the SF424 for Israeli applicants. And, and uh, one point also for the, for the address, your address should be the same as the one that you have in SAM. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the address of your organization or if it's an individual. This Maybe this is a... This should not say the United States. Okay, we're gonna take a careful look at this, but thanks for asking to go through this. Let's see if there's a question in the chat. Is the SF424 required applications? Just one second. Yes. Is the SF424 required for applications? By yes, and it, yes. it's attached, it's a different uh, form. It's SF424I. Okay, so yeah, some of our forms have a version that has an I at the end that indicates it's for individuals. Okay, I was started to hear a question. Do you want to repeat your question? Uh, apologies, just uh, a short question regarding the address. We have uh, changed our office, so at the moment we don't have a permanent address. Is it possible to just write one of the staff members or the CEO address just for the application? Are you registered in SAM? Sorry? Are you registered in SAM? What is the address you added in Sam? Oh, I haven't done it yet. I'm I'm listening for the first time to all it today. But uh, that's a question you were relevant, I guess, just for that as well. So you you need to decide what address you prefer, and you need to okay. keep it for uh, for uh, to register in Sam. Okay. And usually it should be the official address that you also deal with the, you know, Israeli, uh, you know, institutions here. I mean, uh, as an NGO, what is your official address as an NGO? We don't have. We just ask it to send the bills or the payment for the, okay. for the, to the chairman or to my house. So I can just add a personal address, I guess. Right. So for now. Okay. Great. Thanks. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other fields to go through here? Just that they need this to description is an important field yeah. right here. Yeah. Yeah. And the the, the, the title publish. of the project, mm -hmm. and then um, the the start and the end date of the project, the amount that you request, that and then apply. signature and date. Mm -hmm. Basically, th this this form doesn't does not have a lot. It's it's very basic. That's why we we're asking you to complete the other forms. Okay. Okay. We've already answered. no no this one. You went up. Go down. Scroll down. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Last question. Um. I think you're scrolling up. Scroll yeah. Down. Make sure everything is spelled the same in English when you translate things in SAM and SF424. That's a good point. Yes. yes. Many um, Hebrew or Arabic names and titles can be spelled many different ways, as you know, in English. So pick one and stick to it. Um, can travel for faculty from an Israeli college to the U.S. for training and collaborative meetings with U.S. faculty be eligible for this grant and included in the budget? If this is re required by the program, yes, it can be included. Yeah. Yes, you need a physical address to get a UEI from SAM.gov. That's correct. 
Okay, our college is registered in Sam, but our institution has merged with another college and has a new name. Can we register with the old name or is it possible to change it in the system? I recommend um, opening a ticket with at the sam.gov um, support desk and ask them for assistance with this. Okay, sections 10, 11, 12, and 13. SF-424 is required for individuals, yes. Uh, there's SF-424-I that you should fill out. Okay, sections 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay, so you don't need to fill this out. Fun. Section 10, name a federal agency. Well, I guess that's the Department of State. Yeah, yeah. no, you don't, you don't need to fill it. Yeah, we'll... Um, I'm going to push it until we have in there. If, if it's in doubt, um, Leave it blank for the moment, and you can also write to us in our email. This is the funding opportunity here. The point. funding opportunity number is in our... Um, yeah, that's at the, the top on the website. <clears throat> okay, you're welcome for answering the questions. Opening a ticket may sound daunting, but the folks on the other side of the ocean are very helpful. Thanks, Ruth. It is true. They are helpful. Okay, so just to summarize, again, the, the deadline is June 30th. We will not consider applications received after June 30th. They should be um, submitted to our email address, which we can post one more time, maybe the website and the email address one more time. This recording will be shared on the website along with frequently asked questions, which we're updating regularly. So please um, check that again. If you have questions, a lot of you will have the same questions. Um, and do read carefully everything listed in the funding opportunity because a lot of the details um, to some of the questions are there. The forms are linked there that you can fill out. Um, and we look forward to working with many of you. Thank you so much for your interest. We'll stay online for just a few more minutes if there's any final questions, but we're gonna um, wrap things up now. We'll stop the share. Yeah. Uh, can I can I can I ask a, a question? Yeah, let me answer one more question, Safa. Yes, okay. A okay. question about if the letters of support should be in English. I think the entire application should be in English, correct? Yes. I mean, obviously, we have staff that speak Hebrew and Arabic, but that would be better. But for for an initial submission, it may not be required. Just take into consideration that reporting wise, it will be required to be in English. So this is something, for example, if you're not able uh, for yourself to do that, then you should include that in the budget item that you will need someone to work on reporting in English because reporting are required to, to be in English. Okay, Safwan, well, can, you, would you like to ask your question? Yes, uh, my question is uh, for Manal, hi Manal. Uh, throughout the years, I'm sure that you helped uh, different countries and different organizations. And I'm sure that you, through the years, you learn more from this kind of activities. Can you give us, this, this is a general question. Can you uh, tell me a specific, a specific project that uh, you, you supported and you saw in your eyes the benefits? It's a big question. We have supported several projects. I'm sorry, that it's, I'm sorry that it's a big a question. I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. We supported several projects that uh, we're very happy that they were very successful. Um, just for the uh, time uh, timing for today, I recommend and I'll send you a link to our website. Uh, we publish there all the information about projects that we support through the year, and you can see what type of project the embassy supported. So we will share the link. And uh, you can uh, see that in that link. And you can look Thank at our much. social media to oh. our Facebook and Instagram pages. Often show some highlights from our from our projects. Thank you, Manal. Uh, hello for uh, you, everyone. Hello. Uh, uh, speaking, uh, Muhammad Dia from Nazareth, uh, the coach of uh, Islamic Scouts. And uh, uh, first of all, I like to thank you uh, on all of the efforts you give us for our society it's uh, we we really appreciate that 
thank you already. And uh, I have two points to ask. Uh, uh, first, uh, for Manal, I want to ask you something outside the fundings about uh, topic uh, for the students they want to uh, learn in high school uh, in America. We say, we speak about this uh, topic uh, before, and uh, I want to ask you again. Okay. For this, I'm going to send you the link uh, about the uh, the opportunities for high school students. I will send it. I will actually share it in the chat. So if you can and, maybe just ask a question about the current uh, APS, oh, please. Thank you. And the uh, uh, next point is uh, all all this and the, the link uh, of the funding the website where we have uh, do you want to send it on the on the whatsapp or uh, where uh, we can get the link right here in the chat in the zoom if you can open the oh, chat okay. Okay. you'll see the links there yep thank you very much and nice to meet you great thank you so much for joining any other last questions before we sign off i'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead Yes, or who was that? Um, uh, it was uh, Rowan, sorry, I can't open my camera. Uh, it's, it's a repetitive question. Uh, I got confused. Do we, do we submit all of the uh, all of the forms on email or on your, on your website? In the email, yes. Please send them as attachments to the email. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Ruth, I see your hand raised. I just wanted to say it's wonderful to be in a session with three women. So <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> I didn't even do it on purpose. So thank you. <laughs> just wanted to say that I was delighted. So anyway, thank you so much for your patience and sharing. Thank you. Thanks for your interest. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, stop the recording. We'll stay on just for a couple minutes longer, but we're gonna wrap this up and thank you all for your interest. Check back our frequently asked questions regularly and we look forward to seeing your proposals.